So Connect SDK for Windows has just come out. Uh, for commercial use especially is very exciting for us. Uh, where do you see opportunities for that technology in the coming years? Well, I think there's two different categories of, of possible technologies. One is more like a vertical solution. So you already see people who are demoing it in um, healthcare, in retail, in education, and you're seeing people already kind of tinker with hobbyist type apps that they're going to turn into commercial apps. Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side of that, you see more like horizontal applications. So I've actually seen videos of people using the Connect for Windows product to do things like power their ERP systems. Oh, wow. You know, like do use gestures to control your ERP system or your CRM system, or even, you know, do, it, do kind of a gesture where you're c controlling um, a PowerPoint mm -hmm. deck so that you don't have to actually, wow. you know, use a clicker or your mouse, but you would instead just gesture in front of it or even use the voice technology and connect to make it do what you want it to do. Wow. Yeah, I think it's going to be big. Me too. So another thing that's happened recently is that I don't know if it was leaked or announced, but Windows Phone 8 has um, been announced as possibly coming out as early as the end of 2012. And we all know that uh, Nokia is shipping a lot of phones uh, with the Windows 7 uh, platform. How do you think that's going to affect Windows and Windows Phone 8 and uh, Nokia this year? I think that's going to be really tricky for Microsoft and for Nokia and other phone partners because, yes, I think Windows Phone 8 operating system, which is codenamed Apollo, is going to come this year. And so here we are with Nokia announcing all these phones that are going to start shipping mid-year and they're not going to be running that platform. And so the big question is, can you upgrade from the current Windows 7.5 operating system, uh, Windows Phone 7.5 operating system to 8. We don't know and nobody is saying for Microsoft. So I think for people who are kind of geeks um, or people who have really follow the mobile phone technology stuff, they know that this could be a stepping stone kind of an issue. But I think everyday consumers, you know, the people who Nokia really wants to buy the new Lumia handsets that they're bringing to the US, they don't know this. Like they don't That's know true. about Apollo, right? So. For, I think for the average consumer, it may, may not be a big deal, and Nokia still will be able to sell these uh, existing handsets without disclosing whether or not you can upgrade. Right. But for people like us, you know, the people who are really obsessed with technology, I think it could be a big stumbling block. Okay. Um, so this time there's been a difference in how they're rolling out the technologies uh, for Windows, uh, sorry, yeah, Windows 8. Um, so I know that coming up is a Windows consumer preview rather than a beta. Why do you think the change in terminology this time around? Um, so I can tell you what Microsoft says on this sure. and I'll tell you what I think, okay. which are two different things. <laughs> um, so Microsoft is saying the reason they don't want to call what's the next milestone a beta is because the whole word beta doesn't really mean anything like it used to. You know, in the old days when a beta came out, you assumed it was very buggy, you assumed you could file bug reports, and that it was really not ready for prime time in any way, shape, or form. But now, you know, with Google and Microsoft, too, rolling out so many things that are in perpetual beta, right. you know, you just accept, oh, this is ready, I can use it, even though it's called a beta, um, it's still good to go. And so I think they're trying, they're saying they're trying to react to that change in what people expect when they hear the word beta and don't hear the word beta. But I think, I'm a little more cynical on this, and I think um, what's also coming into play here is Microsoft has really changed how they develop Windows. Um, since Windows 7 and now going into Windows 8, it's not the way it used to be. There aren't, a, there isn't a lot of chance for people to file bugs or feature suggestions that are gonna be incorporated into the product. I mean, it's pretty much set in stone from a very early point what the features are going to be, how they're going to work. I mean, Microsoft will make tweaks if there's huge outcry on something. You know, like in Windows 8, for example, not being able to use your mouse um, as well as you might like with the Metro interface. Um, but for the most part, by the time this product hits consumer preview at the end of February, it's done. Right. So I think this is why they're calling it consumer preview. They're saying to people, we're open to you, every consumer, any ever average person to right. try, put this on your machine and try it. Wow, okay. And so now developers have had uh, access to this since September of last mm -hmm. year. Uh, and it seems like they have some really strict design guidelines. They have the Metro uh, UI, they have these charms that are in Windows 8, and even the contracts. Um, do you see sort of the guidelines loosening up a little bit as we move on, or are those going to stay in place for a while? I 
think those are staying in place. And okay. in fact, maybe even getting tighter. Oh, wow. Um, we just learned recently um, when Microsoft disclosed quite a bit of information about uh, Windows 8 on ARM that right. there are a lot of things that developers were thinking they could do um, on that platform that now they aren't going to be able to do. Like for example, um, we had heard there was going to be a desktop app slash environment on Windows 8 on ARM, and there is. But we just found out recently that the only apps that are going to be able to run in that desktop are from Microsoft. So Office 15 will run there, right. Internet Explorer 10, uh, the file explorer and maybe some other OS components, but some developers were thinking they could get their apps to work there too, because not everybody necessarily is ready or willing to go the Metro right. style um, side of the house yet. Uh, but now they've found out, nope, that's not an option. So if you want your app to run on Windows on ARM, you have wow. to go Metro. And you know that that's just a very recent disclosure, and a lot of developers are going, wait, what? And and now I'm not going to have any plugins either. I can't do any yeah. plugins on this platform. So I think I don't think you're going to see Microsoft ease ease up at all. I think wow. you may even see them tighten things. Up. Wow. Okay. And one final question. So we're hearing that Windows 8 tablets are going to come out possibly as early as this fall. What do you think is going to make a consumer buy a Windows 8 tablet? over an iPad or something running a version of Android? Uh, $64,000 question, yes. right? <laughs> um, so I think there's two parts to this again. I think um, we've got the hardware form factor side of this, which isn't really in Microsoft's control. Um, it's because you know they have third-party hardware makers who are their partners who are building tablets for Windows 8. And we haven't really seen these so far. Um, uh, I, all I can say as a potential consumer interested in buying this is I hope they're much thinner, uh, lighter, with great battery life, and less bulky than Windows 7 tablets. Because if they're not, I'm not ready to trade an iPad in right. for that. Um, but uh, as far as on the Microsoft side, you know, what are they going to bring to the party that'll make them more competitive with iPad. I would say the platform to watch is Windows 8 on ARM. Yes. Um, that's where you're going to see the true iPad competitors from Microsoft and the partners. And right now, I'd say the biggest uh, potential selling point that we've heard about is Office. So they've said there are going to be four Office apps, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote on these devices somehow. So we don't know if they're integrated, bundled, pre-installed or free. We don't know any of that yet, but a lot of people who have iPads always say they wish they'd have Office on the iPad. Right. So right now, I'd say that's Microsoft's big carrot. Um, the question is too, you know, uh, there are a lot of rumors saying Microsoft is going to do its own suite of Office apps for the iPad. I heard that. So if they do that, then does that take away the competitive advantage that they might have on Windows on ARM? Right. So that, it's kind of a big unknown at this point, and um, I, as I said, I hope they have something really compelling and awesome because I'd like to switch over to a WinPad instead of an iPad. Mm -hmm. I think it would integrate better into my environment since I'm already a Windows user and a Windows phone user. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of people like me who would rather have kind of a more of a homogeneous sure. environment where everything more tightly integrates and updates with each other. Um, but that might not be enough of a selling, selling point, so we're gonna have to wait and see it. Definitely, we'll wait and see. Thank you for talking with us today. Thank you.